do you ever just think, oh, can I just put the kettle on and uh, <laughs> plug it in? No, because electricity makes me feel weird. I'm back in Wales, revisiting Emma Orbach, who, for the past 20 years, has taken wild living to the extreme. Look, there she is. I mean, that is a beautiful building, Emma. I'll learn if getting older has affected her unique way of life. I have to accept that I can't pick up as heavy things as I used to. But it's taken a bit of coming to terms with. <laughs> Meet the people she shares her wild home with. I'd say um, Emma's ecological footprint is, is writ large across the land. And uncover why she continues to be disillusioned with modern society. I feel that I live luxuriously um, with everything that I need. It's the dream. Yeah, but if it's the dream, why are people running in the opposite direction? The beautiful thing about this country is that you're never far from the wilderness. It's within touching distance almost everywhere. I'm surrounded by forest, rivers. This is truly beautiful and very, very wild. Emma! Uh, welcome back. Five, five years. Yeah. Oh, How very nice you? to see you. Emma, this is just incredible. So is this, is this the biggest change since I was last here? It's the biggest change for me personally. In a world that, my world, which doesn't change very much. Yeah, building my new hut, that was a big change. Like last time, her new home is built from straw, mud and manure and is, of course, completely off-grid. This pattern works for me and, um, yeah, the rest of the world is novelty crazed. People often talk about a sense of belonging. Do you, do you think you belong here? I do feel I belong here and certainly I feel my roots are here. It would be very easy to meet Emma or just look at the peripheral character and appearance and and almost um, dismiss her as crazy or alternative or cult-like but it's much more profound than that she's much more intellectual everything is very considered the tranquility of this woodland is something that i remember very well from my last visit emma's departure from the modern world had created a sense of serenity and yet it also meant that the simplest of tasks were often complex affairs. Just making a cup of tea was a series of physical jobs. Imagine doing this, you know, on a, on a, on a winter's day. Freezing cold, snow all around, very different. I was staggered at the lengths Emma went to for something that most of us take for granted. It's not hurting the earth making this cup of tea, and I like that feeling. I have to admit, it's very satisfying. Oh, that was a, that was a, well, I wouldn't say a well-earned cup of tea, because I needed the tea from making the tea. <laughs> People always ask you, what do you miss? I don't miss email. Who would? Who would miss getting up in the morning and opening your emails? It's a mad thing to even think about. I've heard a stat that we touch our smartphones two and a half thousand times a day. Like, do you touch your partner two and a half thousand times a day? Probably not, you know? I don't know, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> no electricity? No electricity, so we have no internet, no mobile phone, um, no running water. Um, I've actually got a bit of a surprise for you today in that I'm going to ask you to give up your mobile phone, if you have one, uh, for the duration of your stay. Yeah. So um, I don't know how that sits with you. Well, yeah, well, I, well, yeah, I can I can do that. No tech. That's part of the lifestyle, is it? That's part. That's a big part of what I'm doing. Yeah, it's to get away from screens, from electricity, it's the things that disconnect us from reality. Um, so I'm trying to get back to of having a very very strong connection with the natural world mm -hmm. and the people around me. He talks about connection, and I, I get that. If I'm here, he wants me eyes looking at him and not kind of looking down or kind of, uh, he, he wants me to be present for the whole time. And I get that because that's what I would like to have in my life, but I haven't been able to find the, the way to actually achieve that. Maybe I will after this week. Do you think letter writing brings you closer than us using phone calls and emails and, and texts? Definitely. Um, it's more intimate for a start, you know, but you also go into a different headspace. Um, like when you, you can knock out an email in 10 seconds, you know, like a quick line or a quick text. When you sit down with a pencil and paper, you start thinking about what you really want to say to the person. Um, and you actually share a lot more emotional stuff. 
Like how many people have reread emails five times in their bed because how how wonderful email is? You know, it's it's a different energy. Do you remember the last time you wrote a letter by hand? Do you know what? If I'm really honest, I don't think I've written a letter for like a decade. Oh. Well. Yeah. I've de I've never written one to my children. Yeah. And you make me think about that. I might have to give it a go. <laughs> I feel inspired. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? Well, how are you? It's a cold one. Anything interesting? I have one for you and one for a Ben oh, For Ben, all right. Brilliant. Look at this. I never get letters. Yeah. Do you know who it's from? That, if I'm not mistaken, it looks quite like my daughter's writing, but yeah. we'll have to see. But thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, really nice to meet you. you. Paul, thanks very much, Yeah, 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 yeah for a pretty man, yeah, yeah. See you a bit. Dear Daddy, I hope you're having a nice time in Ireland. And <laughs> I can't ever read stuff like this because I get all teary. And you're the best daddy ever. I can't wait to see you. Love, well, Iona. That's so sweet. I love that. Love you, Iona. Powerful, the written word, isn't it? This is a magical place. Fortunately, she's marked out a, a trail of pink ribbons, so I shouldn't get lost. It really did feel like I was walking into the unknown. A kilometre into the woods, I thankfully spotted my host. Oh, wow, I didn't expect this. Wow, look at you, hello. Hey. How are you Hi. doing? Very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. How are you? Wow. You know. So I don't want to comment on appearance straight away, but you look amazing. <laughs> well, you look like you have a suntan. I got, I've come from warmer places. I'm sure your weather will strip the suntan off me in no time. Lynx Vilden is half British, half Swedish. Raised in London, she spent family summers roaming Northern Europe's remote forests. Lynx was an artistic wild child and at 16 became a punk rocker and moved to Amsterdam. Her hedonistic years spent there would prove to be a pivotal moment in her life. Aware she was on a path to self-destruction, Lynx decided to radically change her lifestyle by making a pledge to shun the modern world. Her aim was to live a more wild, basic life, and a 30-year odyssey took her to some of the world's most challenging environments, learning primitive skills. Ten years ago, she inherited $165,000 from her mother and bought a five-acre plot of land in Washington State. Determined to create a place she could live in as prehistorically as possible and invite others and teach them to do the same.